Ah, oh, the hazard fart. How dust we love thee so. Yeah, yeah, it's the Memorial Day sale on jacks. I picked them up both because why not? Uh, so I'm going to put these together and then I'm going to compare it against my current favorite jack from Summit, the old PT Tools or P Tools? Performance Tools. That's a two ton low pro. And then I've got the old Craftsman uh, three ton, nothing special jack over here that I got on sale from Ace last year for 90 bucks. I could not pass it up, uh, at least until this deal came along. And although that one's going to come in last on absolutely every single category you could put it against, except for maybe overall weight, for 90 bucks that was, you know, pretty hard to beat. The, the red one here was 99 and the blue one there was 124 So we'll put them together and see what we got. The Pittsburgh here, the Daytona there with the tops off. Pretty similar boxing so far. And there we are with the top packing off and the handles out of the way. Uh, again, pretty identical. Here are the handles, which appear to be, other than the color and the lettering on the foam, identical. Identical in length, size. Well, I guess that's different. Where these pop in. Other than that, on with the show. Actually, there is another difference. You see, on there on the Daytona, there's no caution about bleeding the air out of the jack. On the Pittsburgh, there is, and it says you do this before operating. In the instructions for the Daytona, it does have a section in here on how to do it. It's just that it doesn't have the warning there, so I'm not going to do it on that one, and I will on this one. So here they both are set up. We've got the red one uh, bled, ran through that procedure. And it's fairly simple, just do what the instructions say. Uh, and there was a just the slightest uh, hiss of trapped air when I took the fill plug out. So I'd say that's probably worth doing because any trapped air in there is gonna cause you trouble. Uh, just follow directions, you can't lose. But here you can see um, lengthwise, they are pretty much identical. They pretty much both go to the same uh, height, and they both go about a lowering range. On the Daytona, we've got a three and a quarter low to a 20 inch high. And on the Pittsburgh, we have a three and eighth low to a 19 and 7 eighths high. So it's the same range, it's just that the Pittsburgh says it starts lower. However, uh, just me looking at things here, I can't really see it unless it has something to do with the with the rubber pad that the Daytona has and that the Pittsburgh does not. But you can see the, the swoop of the Jack's frames are pretty much identical. The way the casters come on the back is pretty much identical. One of the major things that I saw right away is that the way the Jack handles come to a resting position is not identical. And you can clearly see it there. This is just, that's just as high as, this, as the Pittsburgh goes. Daytona goes straight up and while that may not be a big deal to you know, maybe most It is to me when you're working in limited shop space like this and every Square inch matters uh, You can push that jack up just a little bit closer up under your toolboxes or Maybe up under the front of a car or something like that And it does help the obvious difference is that the Daytona has uh, some gusseting here that comes up and supports these rear casters and clearly the Pittsburgh has nothing on it. Um, I feel like the casters are are the same, but just the way they're attached, the Daytona is a little more beefy. Uh, just these jack cover plates themselves, I took this one off just to see what the difference was in the hydraulic jacks, which looked identical. Um, the, just this cover itself felt heavier and stiffer than the one over here on the on the Pittsburgh and it may have something to do the stiffness surely with the fact that these are raised letters here and give it a little bit of rigidity uh, and then you've got a little bit of a different outline here on the the gusseting or what have you that goes along the the front frame of the jack whereas the Pittsburgh is a uh, a transition towards bigger towards the the front casters the Daytona has a swoop that goes out and then comes back in. And then uh, you have the the rubber pad on the Daytona. You don't have anything over here on the Pittsburgh. 
And a look from the bottom shows that, again, they are very same, but there's at least one thing I see here that's different. Uh, actually, two. One, this support bar on the Daytona is a lot wider than what you have on the Pittsburgh here. And these arms that raise the, uh, what, the, the jack itself up, these are straight on the Pittsburgh. And on the Daytona, they're not. They come in at the front of the jack to the lifting portion of the jack itself. As far as it comes to where the hydraulic jack is supported onto the, the lifting portion of the jack, it appears to be the same. The jacks themselves, I would guess, are probably the same. Really hard to know that for sure. The casters, the ones on the Pittsburgh might actually be just a shade more rounded than the ones here on the Daytona, and I think they are. Uh, and the same is definitely true on the front. The Daytona is very flat casters, and on the Pittsburgh, they are rounded. And you can kind of see that just from the wear marks on the on the casters as I've been scooting around the garage. That one has wear all over the surface, and that just has wear in the middle of it. That might actually make the Pittsburgh a little bit easier to scoot around depending on what kind of surface you're working on. Who knows? Oh, there is one other minor difference, and I don't think it probably matters at all. It's just for looks. The screws that hold in the jack cover plates on this one are countersunk so that they're flush with the frame of the jack. And on the Pittsburgh, they're not. They stick out from the frame. Just a little, you know, a little cleaner, a little, little nod to design on the Daytona. Uh, and it, it does make it look a little bit better. And I think that more or less covers the major, uh, at least the design differences on these two jacks. Is that compelling enough for you to spend the extra, well for me it was $25 on the Daytona over the Pittsburgh? I don't know. Depends on how much you use them. So I'd say what we need to do next is uh, let's look at this compared to my two-ton PT jack and then uh, the Craftsman and then we'll take each one at a time and just see how it lifts up this X5 BMW which is a very heavy car. It's got the V8, it's all-wheel drive and it's, I don't know, at least 5,000 pounds. We'll just jack them up, see how they do. Alright, looking at these four beasts from this angle, you can clearly see uh, two things are, are readily apparent. Number one, the handle position on that Daytona is straight up and down, and the other three are not. They've all kicked back a little bit, and there's no way to make them any straighter. And then the length of the old school non-low profile Craftsman, it's a good three inches shorter than all the rest of them, and it's probably because it's not a low profile jack. Um, it's just a different style. It is what it is. So, and it didn't get nearly as low as the rest of them. And if you've ever wondered, are the low profile jacks worth it? Yes, they are. If you have any kind of newer car that has like the ground effects, the side skirts, uh, or, or any lowered car, um, you've almost got to have them to get up under there where you need to be. These old school jacks are great for trucks and, you know, SUVs and whatever, um, but you just can't beat the, these low profile jacks for getting where you need to go. And then here we can see uh, a little bit of the design of this two ton from Summit. And it has more of a, with these gussets here on the side, is more in line with the uh, Pittsburgh than the Daytona. Doesn't matter, I don't know. It doesn't have the gussets on the on the rear casters either. And all the handles are about the same height except for the Craftsman, which is a bit shorter. In the Google, this uh, 50i X5 is has a curb weight of 4,993 pounds, which sounds about right to me. Big heavy, big heavy SUV. Uh, so we're gonna see how many pumps, how many full pumps, if we can, it'll take this Craftsman to get that front tire up off the ground by using the factory jack pad under there. And uh, this will be the slowest because this is a single piston um, jack and all the other ones that I've got here, they're dual pistons, so it'll be slower. 
uh, but let's just see. Okay, so I can tell this is gonna be a beast to film and try to do full strokes of the jack. Set the camera down, uh, redid it. It took 11 full up and down strokes of the jack to get this front wheel up off the ground. Now, the performance tools, two ton. All right, and it took eight full strokes with the performance tools, two ton, to get this wheel up off the ground. And if you hear that compressor running, that's the compressor for the air springs in the back of this thing. Now, this is a Pittsburgh. Seven full pumps with the Pittsburgh. Not too shabby. And now what we all want to see is the Daytona. And seven full strokes for the Daytona. So I am a bit surprised that the, the Pittsburgh and the Daytona uh, couldn't do it in six considering the PT Tools two-ton did it in eight. Uh, did seven for each one of these, but that's okay. I mean, they're way faster than the old Craftsman over here. Uh, and I would say really much easier, all these dual piston jacks, much easier to pump than the Craftsman is. Some of that has to do with the shorter handle. I'm sure uh, some of that has to do with it being a single piston uh, type of a deal. So that's kind of, you know, a quick overview on this. I think what I want to do is, uh, you know, I don't know, torture test it, if you will, because I know I've done it. If you're watching this channel, I'm sure you've probably done it too. You've jacked something up and you've left it there all night. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it on each one of these, and we're just going to see if they can hold this thing up without dropping, or if they do drop, how much. So that'll be the next thing to do. Probably, I don't know what else, how else you would compare these other than longevity over time, and I haven't had any of these that long. You want to talk about longevity, the old U.S. General uh, one and a half ton aluminum frame jack that I got from the Hazard Fart as a gift from my dad 15 years ago, that thing's still kicking. Uh, and then you've got the really old three ton Hazard Fart jack down there that I don't even, we don't even want to talk about that. Uh, that thing has lasted a long time, and it has used it has been used a lot. Let's just see with these guys. All right, it is now 6.30 a.m. the next day. Heading to work. Wheel still off the ground. Let us check out the measurement. And it's pretty much still right on 18. It's about an eighth of an inch down. So it's held this load up, sag maybe an eighth of an inch over 10 hours, and that's pretty good. So let's move on to another one. Oh, and I should say another important component of any of these jacks is how well, how smoothly, safely they release this load. And any, any of these is going to be better when the handle is straighter out like this. But I know this jack is fairly smooth. And that's not too bad considering I'm just using one hand to do it. It's got a nice grip on here. It gives you some control over it. So on to the next. Okay, tonight it will be the PT two-ton jack. I'm a little bit later on this one. It's almost 9 o'clock. But let's go ahead and get it up in the air anyway. Okay. Got this one up in the air. Let's uh, do a measurement on it real quick. Okay, so again, right next to the frame of the jack to make it easy. And then we'll go right up to the top line of the trim there and we're at exactly 18 and a half inches. So let's see what we are by about uh, 6.30 tomorrow morning. Okay, it's a little after seven o'clock in the morning. Let's see. If we are at 18 and a half, we're still up. Okay. And there you can see we are still pretty much right at 18 and a half. Well, it might have dropped a little, maybe a 16th, but not very much. Not enough worth worrying about. Okay, awesome. So that turned out well. 
Next, tonight, will be the old Pittsburgh. And I already know, because I've had this jack for a while, but this is super smooth on the release. Doesn't take much effort at all. And it comes down nice and slow. It definitely one of the best things about this jack over all my other older, not so good ones that I had before. Tonight, the old Pittsburgh. Wheels up, let's get a measurement. Okay, right next to the frame there. And then right up to that trim, it's about an 18. Let's see, 18 and an eighth. Let's go with 18 and an eighth. All right, see you in about 10 hours, Pittsburgh. Okay, about eight o'clock here on a Sunday morning, so it's been up in the air for quite some time. I may or may not be just a little bit hungover. Let's see. So what did we say? About 18 and an eighth, I think. And we are right on 18 and an eighth, more or less. So the Pittsburgh, from what I can see, has not lost any height at all. And that is pretty impressive. So let's see how smooth it is. Okay, not quite as smooth as my PT jack, but um, then again, that was using my left hand and I'm not feeling all that great this morning. So the last one will be the Daytona tonight. And finally, the old Daytona. Wheel up, let's get a measurement. All right, right next to the jack frame there, to the top of that trim piece we're looking at right at 18 and a quarter. So, about 8.30. I will see you at about 6.30 tomorrow. Okay, here we are the next morning. We're still up, let's get a measurement. Okay, next to the frame. And we're right at 18. So we lost maybe about an eighth of an inch. The, the loss there I think is negligible. Uh, just like on all these jacks so unsurprisingly they're all very similar i uh, don't think you can make a wrong choice with any of them Let's see if we can get her down oh yeah this one's way smooth so i definitely appreciate a jack that is easy to release like that without having the whole thing jerk and then the car fall down almost in an uncontrolled descent. So uh, I'll hand it to the Daytona and then the performance tool the jack as being the smoothest. Thanks for watching.